This is uh, Intro to Justice Tech, platform for improving efficiency, transparency, and access. And I am Ryan Foley. I'm a senior enterprise architect with ImageSoft, I'm specifically focused on Justice Tech. So if you have Justice Tech questions, I am probably your guy. If not, I'll find someone for you. Uh, so do we have any existing customers, anyone using any of our workflow solutions? Okay. I recognize a few people, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> so Justice Tech is, uh, and, you know, some of these concepts have been discussed before in the keynote in Scott's presentation. So some of this can be kind of redundant as I go through some of the concepts can be reiterated. And the purpose of that is because that first item there, improving efficiency. By creating Justice Tech as a product, we're really looking to improve your overall efficiency as a business, but also the efficiency of the actual solution itself, the deployment, the ability to upgrade it, all of these aspects of it. So I'll go over it throughout the presentation. So I'm going to start off, though, with this intro with the end purpose, which is really to store and manage 100% of the information in your court electronically. So we're talking about complete end-to-end -end court information electronic, all the way from the data that comes in your door to the case management solution that you use in the back end and that flow of that data backward and forward. So let's start off with a typical court, typical enterprise. Um, there are a few components of a typical solution. The first one is the process. And this is all of the information that's really in your heads, right? This is how you do your business. Having this information in your heads, one of the big risks there is that that information can be lost as employees leave. Those processes change, and that information needs to be, across the board, standardized. The second core component is the content, the actual information, the, the documents that you use to drive your process. Now, in the paper world, this is represented as paper case files, paper documents, the items that come in the door. Usually, to be able to distribute those amongst multiple people, you have to create copies, which is inefficient, or that you have to go and search out that particular piece of paper that you're looking for, which can only really be in one place at a time when it's the official record. And the last piece is your data. This is your metadata associated with all of your case files, your parties, attorneys, all the information that backs up that content. So what ImageSoft typically does is we'll go into a court and we'll evaluate your process, your content, your data, and we'll develop a customized solution consisting of three really transitioning these three main components to an electronic format. And in the past, that was a complete customized solution, beginning to end, brand new information every time. As we've gone through multiple iterations, we've come up with some more standardized solutions that work for multiple groups, multiple courts. So the first thing that we do really is evaluate your process, and we bring in a new workflow solution, or solutions, depending on how many groups you're going to transition. These workflow solutions help to drive your process and can provide consistency, standardization, and maintain knowledge and allow you to improve your process moving forward in ways that you couldn't before. The second thing is replacing that content with an electronic case file. And this does two things, really. Ease of access to be able to rap rapidly retrieve that information from multiple sources, right? They were talking before about being able to retrieve from multiple from your mobile device something you couldn't do before. You don't have to necessarily go to a computer. You don't have to go to the office. You don't have to go to the filing room to go and grab that case file if it's there, not assuming that's not on someone else's desk and unavailable to you. Now you can just go directly to your electronic case file. And the other thing, too, is distribution. Able to access it by from multiple people in multiple ways. It's a really powerful tool. And the last thing is integration with your case management system. So a lot of government agencies have, a lot of courts have case management systems that are controlling and managing all of their data, all of their metadata. They're driving some of their events. They're handling the case, the party, the attorney information. Integrating this all together really gives you an end-to-end -end electronic system to drive your processes, attach your content to your metadata, and really bring all of those disparate systems together. 
And so when we wrap this up in our Justice Tech components, the tools that we provide in our Justice Tech solutions, that's where you really get the full end-to-end -end scope of Justice Tech. So one of the key goals with Justice Tech is that we want to support all courts. The solutions can be deployed for trial courts, for appellate courts, and at all levels of the court. In addition to that, one of the more important pieces of functionality is the communication between the different levels. The ability to send an appeal cases up to the appellate courts or to send them back down to the local and general jurisdiction courts. Especially if all these different courts are using Justice Tech solutions, that communication becomes seamless. So I'm going to give a quick overview of some of the goals. Some of these I've already discussed, the support for both small and large courts, and other ones I'll bring up throughout the course of this presentation. But you'll see a lot of themes here that have already been talked about. The consistency across all of these Justice Tech solutions, based on all, the, all of the solutions that we've deployed in the past, really allows us to have quick deployment, even quicker deployment than we've had in the past with OnBase solutions. And you're talking about more consistent deployment across multiple courts. And what does this mean for you? This means that you can have your solutions from the discovery phase all the way through the implementation phase. You can short circuit that entire process. Also, it makes it much easier to administrate because all of your solutions are consistent. The solutions are also designed to be scalable across the enterprise. So you can expand them to include more case types, include more groups, bring more people onto the system. And then also adding support for upgrades and releases. As new functionality comes in, it doesn't need to be retrofitted into the solution. It's already proven against the solution and then can be deployed to the various solutions. And then providing standard documentation to improve overall performance and training, right? Documentation to support the systems. And then finally, with hosted or on-premise solutions, you don't necessarily have to have your own Justice Tech solution that you host internally and you administrate internally. You can also have a cloud-deployed solution. And there are actually a few customers that are using those, and I'll bring those up later. So the three and really, some of these are, are sub-solutions, but the three main solutions are the Justice Tech Clerk, Justice Tech Court, and Des Justice Tech Prosecution Solutions. For the Justice Tech Court Solutions, we have the Civil, Criminal, Juvenile, Domestic, Traffic, and Appellate. And as you can see down here, the whole concept is really intergroup communication, right? Being able to have an entire flow throughout all of the Justice Tech Solutions from the public through law enforcement, submitting to the prosecutor, submitting to the court, the court able to review those files, be able to take action on them, hearings, be able to report back up to the public to be able to provide them with the case file, and also when your upcoming hearings are serving those documents to the individuals. So again, it's that continuous flow of information amongst all of the groups, that collaboration that we were talking about during the keynotes and Scott brought up as well. Now, the Justice Tech Clerk and the Prosecution Solutions, are they actually support cloud deployment. And we have um, a few customers, I believe, using the Justice Tech Clerk in a cloud deployment. So that's actually hosted off-site. And then they are able to, through true filing and through OnBase, they're able to access that system over the internet. So let's start with the first interface, which is really getting the information through the door. Getting that information through the door in the past was bringing paper case documents, bringing them to a counter, providing them to the clerk, and the clerk feeding them into whatever system they had it used to be just paper case file. Now maybe you've taken the next step and it's scanning those documents into your system. The next step after that really is e-filing, and we provide a product called True Filing, which has a few different interfaces for each, for each of the individual electronic filers those being the private attorneys, self-represented, and law enforcement, which is our True Filing Lead product. By using a product like True Filing, what you do is you put the ingestion of the data, right, the attachment of the data to the content and the submission of those documents on the filers. They don't have to come in anymore. They can submit at all hours of the night. And then those filings can be made available immediately to the clerk for review. 
True filing can be customized for each of the individual courts that are using it based on your court rules. It's not just a generic submit a filing and the court has to take from there and figure it out. It can really be customized depending on what you need from case initiation, the filings that are required for each of the individual case types, and then also the information that's attached to those, case, to those filings. True filing also provides electronic service of documents. So the private attorneys or law enforcement, they, they actually have the ability to serve those documents to the individuals if they have their contact information, right? And they can just send out an email and then actually track the record, the audit trail of who has viewed and who has been served the filings. It supports all case types and it can be expanded, again, back to that scalability of the solution. And you can also provide access to your electronic case file through true filing. So public access becomes that much easier. Access for opposing counsel, right? Discovery, all of these solutions, all of these pieces of the solutions, the business process that you need to provide, the technology can handle that. So I'm going to dive first into the Justice Tech Clerk solution. I'm going to talk kind of at a high level because it's an uh, introduction, but if you guys have questions or if we want to dive into any more of these pieces, and some of these will be a little bit redundant as I go into the other solutions because a lot of the functionality is kind of cross solution. So let's start off with the workflow. Usually with the clerk solution, it starts off with a review process. The filings come in and the clerk has to review those filings and decide whether or not they're going to be accepted or rejected and respond back to the filer. Traditionally in the past, that was done right at the counter, collecting payment for any accepted filings. Now, those documents route into your workflow and the clerk's able to review them immediately, able to attach metadata. Some of that metadata comes from the true filing application submitted by the filer. Some of that information comes from your case management system where the case may already be established, linking all of the content, all of the filings that have been submitted throughout the history of the case all together using that met metadata. The clerk may then have to do some additional routing and normally this is the most complex part of the solution. This is the information that sometimes gets lost because it's all up here in the paper world. By having a workflow solution, you're able to handle the business rules behind much of that routing. Specific filings, where they need to go, who needs to see them, whether or not they have an additional approval process. Does this need to be signed by a judge? All of that can be built into the workflow solution. And then there are a few of our products that are actually integrated into the workflow solution, including TrueSign, TrueCertify, and iDoc Creator. Um, TrueSign provides the ability to mark up documents and also electronically sign them. Also apply electronic stamps. So now you no longer have to work with paper documents. You can just work electronically. TrueCertify allows you to provide certified copies to constituents. Um, the way that that works is you actually you get a request for a certified copy that may be over the phone. It may be them coming from the counter in the past. You had to take that paper document, maybe make a copy of it, and put a stamp on it, usually some kind of raised seal, to indicate that it's a certified copy by the court. Now that can be done electronically, and those documents can actually be sent by email, printed off, or provided physically to them. And then they're attached to an electronic certification per court. And most of the workflow solutions are driven from eForms, which allows you to really have the data that you need to access right there at your fingertips rather than having to always work from the content. And finally, I talked before about the electronic service from True Filing. That same electronic service is available from the Justice Tech solution. So when the court needs to serve an order that's been signed to the parties, they have the ability to do so directly from the workflow solution. The second component, the electronic case file, we have some pre-built taxonomies for the electronic case file, the document types and keywords and the folder structure meant to represent what a case file looks like in the court. And the most powerful part of this is that the case files can be secured, who has access to what public viewable case files, public viewable documents, right? Private ones, internal, uh, maybe confidential, sealed, all of that sec those security levels can be handled in the electronic case file. And then the ability to quickly retrieve exactly the information that you want, the entire case file, part of the case file, or the relevant data in the actual workflow solution relevant to what you're working on is very, very powerful. 
And the fact that I can be looking at the case file at the same time that you're looking at the case file. Couldn't do that before in the paper world without having to make copies of documents. And finally, the case management integration. So the Justice Tech solutions are case management system independent. We can integrate with any of the case management systems out there. We have some direct integrations with existing case management systems like uh, ACT and JCT, if anybody works in Michigan. Um, we've integrated with Mixis, CourtView, um, various case management systems, uh, CCMS out in uh, Arlington, Virginia. So it's really case management system independent. Now, those integrations, the function that's provided traditionally is the case, party, and attorney information. Being able to take that metadata that's already in the case management system and feed it up through your workflow solution, drive your workflow processes, automatically attach the information so you don't have any kind of redundant keying of data between the multiple systems. Also, the ability to automatically docket filings that are submitted in your case management system and take any of those dockets, any kind of hearings or events that are coming up and feed those back up in your workflow process to drive your work. And that kind of goes back to what Bill was talking about with the system driving your work rather than driving your content. And finally, there's screen integration with case management systems, very powerful ability to just scrape information from the case management systems or ability to actually pull up content from outside of the OnBase application. The ability to just be working in your case management system and pull up the associated document with a docket or the entire case file associated with the case that you're working with is very useful so you don't have to switch between applications. And finally, document creation. Some case management systems provide document creation integrated into their applications. And those systems we integrate with and we actually consume that content into the OnBase workflow solution. So I talked before kind of the story of how the court clerks work their um, documents. Um, some of the pieces that I touched on briefly, um, specifically auto docketing and payment posting, that one's really important. The um, clerks right now, when you get a paper file and you have to actually enter that information into a case management system, or maybe you're even doubling the information to your enterprise content management system and your case management system, a lot of that metadata is actually being entered originally by the electronic filing system, true filing. Right? The filer submits most of the information by setting up the court rules for how much the individual filings cost, the payment processing occurs in true filing, and then the system, the workflow solution can handle through the case management system integration all of the automatic docketing of those filings and posting the payments associated with them and attaching them to the filings in your case management system. The second one really is the full business rule automation. So what this one is, is building those rules. I talked about that knowledge and losing that knowledge because in the paper world you don't have a standard set of rules. You haven't established those in like a workflow process. Having the full business rules automation and providing tools to be able to manage those rules allows you to really expand and, and change your processes as you need to, but also keep them consistent across the board. The same filing always follows the same process. It automatically gets assigned to the case to the clerk that's working that case. Gets assigned to the judge that is working that case. The hearings as they come up, they're automatically queued up for the judge to be able to see in their calendar what cases they have coming up. So I'm going to dive a little bit into some of the interfaces. So this is the OnBase Unity client, and this is just an example of one of the interfaces for the Justice Tech Clerk solution. <clears throat> so as I talked about before, the, um, the process is driven a lot by these electronic forms. This electronic form here, this is the filing review form, and this provides all of the metadata associated with that filing right at your fingertips. So this is information pulled from true filing by the e-filer when they submit it. It's also information pulled from your case management system. And all of that is pulled together here, so that way when you review your filing, you have all of that metadata that you need to make your decisions at your fingertips. So, and also at the same time, the content next to it. The second thing are these tasks up the top. These are all the functions that we provide to the clerk to perform their work. Now, depends on the solution, but 
you, you can see some of these, the ability to actually retrieve the case file on the far right there. The ability to attach notes to a particular document. And the ability to accept, reject, perform your review of the filing. And the acceptance and rejection may apply information on the case management system. And it'll actually bring that, it'll send that correspondence up to the true filing system, making the e-filer aware of when an event has occurred on their filing, whether it be an acceptance or rejection or a filing with the court. And finally, the last thing is from within workflow, with the document that you're currently viewing, you have the ability to have related content, whether it be the entire case file or just the filings associated with this filing. If multiple filings are submitted in a bundle, maybe you have a motion, you have evidence, or uh, you have exhibits associated with it, or a motion and a brief that are submitted together. Or if you have something like a proof of service indicating that the document was served through true filing. All of that can be made available right here to assist with the review of the case file, or the review of this filing. This right here is the actual e-servicing from the court. So on the true filing side of things, you have the ability to both submit and serve filings. And from the court's perspective, many times you have to serve filings after they've been submitted by the electronic filer, after they've been reviewed, maybe after a signature has been applied by the judge. Those can be driven from workflow processes, automated e-servicing, or it can be driven from more of a manual process where the clerk may have the ability to pull up a list of recipients and select the individuals that need to be served a document. And this can be fed from either your case management system or from your true filing system. And really all three should be talking together, your on-base system, case management, and true filing. And then before I talked about our true certify application, this right here is an example of a certified copy. This is the cover sheet for the certified documents. It provides access to the document to be able to certify that the copy that you have is the copy that was submitted by the court. And the whole point of this is to eliminate the need for a paper certified copy of the document. They don't have to come in, they can request it, and you can provide it to them. And that certifi certification can be accessible to anybody that has this document. So now let's dive a little bit into the Justice Tech court solution. You'll notice that a lot of this information is actually pretty redundant from the clerk solution. And the reason why is because the two solutions tie very closely together. The workflow solution for the courts is a little bit different than the clerks because it's driven more from events, upcoming hearings, and the work that needs to be done from the judicial officer's perspective. So for example, the review of the documents, rather than reviewing the filings for acceptance as they're initially filed, usually you're reviewing the case file to prepare for an upcoming hearing. So the ability to take notes against a specific document, to take notes against a hearing, to take notes against a case, all these are, are important functions that the Justice Tech Solutions provide. Again, we have TrueSign available to be able to apply signatures to one or more documents, to be able to sign an entire queue of documents, orders that are made available to the judge. And finally, eForms to be able to capture the data, the notes, associated with hearings, cases, or with the individual filings, rather than the just content, just the static documents filing submitted by the e-filers. Document creation through IDOC Creator to be able to generate orders, to be able to pre-generate orders and prepared for the hearings. And the last one, arraignment, is actually a very interesting one. We have this e-arraignment application solution that allows judicial officers to be able to arraign individuals over video and provide all the materials necessary to walk through the entire arraignment process, the ability for the individual to sign any of the documentation that they have to and complete that arraignment packet. The court solutions also have their own electronic case file taxonomy. A lot of times this is going to be the same as, again, that clerk taxonomy in terms of the document types and the keywords, and that same ability to secure those files and allow rapid retrieval from multiple interfaces. And the main case management integration, again, the case, parties, attorneys, the integration with all that metadata is still there, but the main one, the most powerful part of the Justice Tech Court solution is the event-driven integration. 
the ability to get new or updated or modified events submitted to the Ambe system to drive your work, your upcoming cases. So the judicial officers have a few different tools, a few different interfaces. And the first one is this Judge View mobile interface, which I believe that there's a breakout session talking about later. Scott, I believe, is, is uh, heading that one. And the Judge View interface is more of a mobile interface, the ability to sit at your bench and be able to perform your work in the courtroom, but then the ability to actually take that case file, take those, that content away from the bench into your chambers or away from your desk and be able to have that available to you on like an iPad interface. The second interface is the daily docket. Rather than reviewing case files as they come in, the daily docket really drives the, case, the cases that you have upcoming. You, the ju judicial officer has the ability to review the case file, the individual filings that have been submitted, and anything relevant to the, the hearings that they have coming up. They also have the ability to apply private annotations, notes that are only available to the judge or to their secretary, information that they don't want to make public, but they want to apply just to their document that they can see in court. And I already talked about the electronic signatures and markups, and so contextually relevant documents, this one here I think is really powerful. The ability to set up your queue so that that way the documents that you see, the content that you see when reviewing a case is relevant to that particular hearing, that particular event, the particular individual that's standing in front of you in the moment that you need to look at those, that document, providing them in a very easy to access and very scoped interface is a very powerful tool for the court. So again, this is a screenshot of the Unity client and the da daily docket interface. This format can be moved around. These can be tabbed and the real estate can be changed at will. But there are a few main components I want to go over. And the first one is here, the inbox. So the inbox for a judicial officer, they can see the upcoming hearings based on date, time, any of that information. They have the ability to sort them, they can filter them, they could see the individual cases, they could pull up any of the hearings upcoming for a specific case if they wanted to. The second is the related items. When I talked before about the contextually relevant documents, that's really what I'm talking about here. When selecting any of the items in my inbox, I'm able to filter and I'm able to view the related documents to that specific item. And this may be the items related to a hearing, maybe the entire case file, but the point is that I can access all of that information at my fingertips right here. And the next thing is the docket event eForm. So by using electronic forms throughout the solution, we're able to capture data that isn't really, it's not an image, right? It's not a document, it's not a filing, right? It's also not metadata. It's not just key information like the person's first name or last name, the case number. It's more relevant to me. So I'm able to take notes against a hearing, against a case, or against a document from these electronic forms. And you'll see here that I actually have case and parties. So from this e-form, we can actually display information about the case, right? have that metadata available if they want to look at it. And also for parties, we can track check-in. So if we have a hearing and parties are coming in and attorneys are coming in, they're able to check in for that hearing. And we can see when all the parties have checked in, so that way we can call the hearing, we can call the case, have them come up and work it. So again, this goes back to driving your work rather than working from the content. And this right here is an example of an electronic case file. And you'll see that many of the components of this electronic case file should be, simil should be familiar to you. The interface itself, here we can see all of the documents. You actually can have related folders. So you can have relationships between multiple cases. In the past, we couldn't do that. With paper case files, you would have to indicate other cases that are related, or maybe you would have them all grouped together. But in the electronic world, now we can have related cases and have them right at our fingertips, be able to switch back and forth between cases across the entire individual. Over here, you'll see that these are all color-coded to provide more of, more of a representation of the physical world, right? Having all those tabs allows you to easily access and see which group of documents you're looking at right now. And the ability to apply annotations specifically to a document and 
even sometimes to a location on a document to be able to highlight information and attach a note to it to bring attention to, to specific detail and to secure those notes so that, that way they're only visible to specific individuals and not visible to the public. Very powerful tools. And finally, the TrueSign application. TrueSign provides a lot of utility. Um, the first piece, obviously, is electronic signatures, right? That's the original goal of the entire application. The ability to apply your signature or a proxy signature to a document and be able to record the individual that applied that signature, the date that the signature was applied, the signature image itself, just from a click. And also, the audit trail associated with that, to be able to record that on, against the document, against the content, to say that, okay, the signature was applied on this date, and that's going to drive those business processes, those rules that are built into that workflow solution. You also have the ability to stamp information on the document, be able to enter text on the document, strike through text, be able to highlight, draw attention to text, redaction, white out. Right here, I've applied both a date and a time. And then finally, the ability to have stamped images. Whether this be, like right here, this is Macomb County, Michigan seal, or other stamps, denied, filed, whatever the court needs to be able to apply to their documents as they did in the paper world. And so now I'm going to move on to the Justice Tech Prosecution Solution, which is a little bit different from the other solutions. Um, many of the components are the same, and so there will still be some redundancies, but there are a few pieces I'm going to call out specifically. So first off, for the workflow solution, a typical PA process starts off with the law enforcement. And so right there you see I have True Filing Leap called out. The law enforcement agencies will actually submit requests to the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor will then review those requests and make decisions upon those requests and decide what the what charges they want to apply to the defendant. And then a response needs to be sent back to the law enforcement agency to indicate to them that it was either accepted or denied. And then additional work needs to be done after that to continue on the process of um, working that case. So some of the components, same components as before, true sign, true certify, document creation, these are all the same same themes provided by the Justice Tech solution. True filing leap, like I said, is a little bit different, I'll get into that, but it's um, very similar to our to just standard true filing. But that is available for all of the law enforcement agencies. And the one I want to call out there is redaction. So a normal part of a prosecuting attorney workflow is the redaction of documents for discovery or for public access. And so that's another key component of the Justice Tech Prosecution solution. And the Justice Tech Prosecution Solutions are also driven heavily by electronic forms. Again, the prosecutor, they have their own case file tech taxonomy. Um, we have some pre-built tax taxonomies for the prosecuting attorney's office. And they have the same powerful searching, retrieval, distribution capabilities that you had before in security for the electronic case file. And finally, the case management integration. Same types of information, the ability to automatically send data to the case management system and bring data from the case management system. The ability to create cases and also attach parties and attorneys to those cases, defendants. The ability to drive events from the case management system up through the OnBase solution and be able to, again, drive your work. And finally, document creation and ingestion of those documents into the OnBase solution. So the architecture for the prosecuting attorney solution is a little bit different because there are a few integration points, a few additional integration points. It all starts off with the RMS, the record management system for the law enforcement agencies. We can handle both integrated and non-integrated RMS systems. The law enforcement agencies are able to submit requests and the supporting documents through the True Filing Leap, which is the True Filing Law Enforcement Agency portal, specifically designed for their needs. Those requests may be submitted with uh, evidence or with other supporting documents attached to it. The law enforcement agency is able to enter the relevant information for that request, um, indicating the suggested charges, the defendants, 
and um, any of the witnesses associated with the incident. That information is all brought down to the prosecuting attorney so that they have ready access to all the information that they need to be able to make informed decisions and to be able to approve or deny the request and to also attach charges to the incident. And finally, the court CMS is able to drive some of those events and be able to integrate with the prosecuting attorney's solution and the prosecuting attorney's case management system is also able to integrate with their workflows. So this is the True Filing Law Enforcement Agency Portal, or LEAP, as we call it. And you can see it's designed to be a very simple interface for the law enforcement agency to be able to create an incident and be able to track that incident, to be able to add defendants, add individuals to it, be able to add witnesses, and be able to attach associated documents for the incident. So I already talked kind of about the request review process and the uh, CMS integration. Um, one other thing is the warrant manual, the ability to actually integrate directly with the warrant manual, pull up the warrant manual and enter any of the charges that need to be applied. That's very powerful, very, ma makes it a lot easier for the individual that's reviewing the request. So let me go through some of the, in, in the uh, interfaces. The first one right here I'm going to show you is, remember I talked before about redaction. This is um, kind of showing you the electronic discovery process. So as when electronic discovery needs to be provided to um, opposing counsel, the documents are queued up in a workflow queue and the user has the ability to actually redact those documents. And once they're finished redacting them, they can actually wrap them all up together as one packet to provide to the opposing counsel. Makes it a lot easier than the past where you have to print it out, you know, mark up the document, and then provide a paper case file. Now you can electronically provide those documents. Another neat part of the system is electronic subpoena. The ability to track subpoenas that have been issued for individuals against the case file. So in OnBase, actually having the ability to see, okay, subpoenas need to be issued to these individuals. That goes up to True Filing Leap. Those subpoenas can then be served by the law enforcement agency. You know, the, the ability to access it mobile and be able to indicate when you've actually served those subpoenas and then have that information come all the way back down to the prosecutor so that way their record is automatically updated with the, the individuals that have been served. And finally, the docket management. So those, again, those events and driving your work through your docket, through your, from your case management system, rather than having to go and seek out the information that's relevant, the information that's upcoming, to be able to have your own calendar and manage your docket through your workflow process. Very powerful tool. So some of the um, counties, some of the groups that we have using this, these solutions, we have Arlington County out in Virginia. They're using actually the Justice Tech Clerk, Justice Tech Civil, Justice Tech Criminal, and they're actually using Public View as well. Public View is um, one of our pieces of the solution to provide access to the public and to the private attorneys to the entire case file. Whether documents come in through true filing, right, our own system, or if they come through a different e-filing system, if they come in directly through OnBase, paper file brought right to the clerk, all of those documents, that entire case file, can be provided through the public view solution. The California Appellate Courts, just recently, earlier this year, they uh, went live with their Justice, Cl Justice Tech Clerk solution, and that's actually in the cloud. So they don't actually have anything on premise. They access it over the internet. They use true filing for submitting their filings. They use the clerk solution over the internet and then it integrates with their case management system that they have on their end. And they're actually deploying this to multiple courts across the state. Macomb County Circuit Court, we actually have some people from Macomb County here. They're deploying the, uh, they've deployed the Justice Tech Clerk solution and they're also deploying the Justice Tech Civil and Juvenile solutions very shortly. And they're actually gonna have an, a fully end-to-end -end electronic solution from true filing all that metadata coming down to OnBase and actually from their case management system, again, driving that, that data back and forth through all phases of the solution. And finally, Cowlitz County out in Washington is deploying more of a full solution end-to-end -end across the Justice Tech Clerk, Justice Tech Civil, Justice Tech Criminal, Justice Tech Prosecution, and they, they're doing something really cool. They're actually going to be integrating with the case management system available through OnBase. So they're going to be using OnBase Case Manager as their case management system instead of using an, a third-party application. 
And that is Justice Tech.